How's it going guys and welcome back to the Pilot Patriot channel. Today we're going to look at the Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight Revolver. Now I actually really like this gun. I love revolvers anyway and I think this is a really good looking gun and it really just feels great in your hand. This is a very popular concealed carry gun. It's a J-frame revolver so it's a nice small compact size. Now just to give you a size comparison, we'll compare it with another popular concealed carry gun, the Ruger LC9. You can see that it's almost the exact same size pretty much from, uh, from front to back and the height is about the same as well. And you could also compare it to the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard. The Bodyguard is actually a little bit smaller, but this airweight revolver is actually lighter than the Bodyguard. And because of its lightweight and simple operation, a lot of people choose this type of gun for concealed carry, especially for women. Now, I can't even count the times I've heard guys say, I want to get a gun for my wife, and I'm thinking about getting a small revolver. What do you think? Or I have women ask me, what kind of gun should I get? Now, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but first we're going to take a look at the gun itself, and then we'll talk about whether or not this is a good choice for that purpose. Now let's get in here and take a look at the gun itself. Smith & Wesson is known for their revolvers. Smith & Wesson revolvers are almost always very high quality, very nice fit and finish, and the 642 is no exception to that. Now like I said, I think this is a pretty good looking gun. I'm not crazy about the way that internal hammer looks with that big hump in the back. I think it's kind of funky looking. But this gun has a nice stainless color. It's like a satin finish that's really nice. These Smith & Wesson black rubber grips are really nice, and like I said, it feels great in your hand. These finger grooves really feel like they're hugging your hand, and these ribs on the grip give you some good traction to get a good hold on the gun. And it really only gives you a two-finger grip, but that's not a big deal. Now, the most obvious feature I've already mentioned is that big hump in the back. And what that is, is because this gun has an internal hammer. It's not hammerless. There is a hammer in there. It's just covered up right here and the reason for that is because this gun is for concealed carry that's so you don't snag that hammer on your clothes or anything when you're going to draw the gun and that's actually a pretty nice feature I can see that being helpful however it does mean that this gun is double action only you do not have the option of cocking the hammer manually to lighten that trigger pull and that brings us to our next talking point this gun like most double action revolvers has a very heavy trigger pull now it's even heavier than most trigger gauges can read, but I have seen it estimated at uh, around 15 pounds, which is pretty heavy. But in a double action revolver, a heavy trigger is actually a safety feature. It helps prevent you from accidentally pulling that trigger if you don't want to. And that can be a very good thing in a concealed carry gun. Now I'll show you what the trigger pull looks like. Even though it is long and, and pretty heavy, it is a very smooth trigger pull but a lot of people may not like this because of that heavy trigger pull. Now these newer 642s come with a locking mechanism that's right there above the cylinder release. And it does come with a key so you can lock this and it actually makes the gun inoperable so that unauthorized people and kids can't take it and shoot it. And that's really only useful when you're storing the gun. There's really no purpose for it when you're using it for concealed carry. I actually just leave it unlocked all the time and just pretty much pretend it's not there. Now let's get up here and look at the sights. They are just basic fixed sights. And it does have a very low profile rear sight and a very shallow gap there. And the purpose for having that shallow rear sight like that is, is the same as having the internal hammer. So that uh, you don't accidentally snag anything on that sight when you're drawing the gun. Now like I said, this is pretty basic. There is no sight adjustment at all. But having these basic sights can be a good thing in a concealed carry gun. Uh, they're typically very reliable and it's basically impossible to break those sights or to get them out of alignment. Now this is a five shot revolver. Now it being five shots rather than six allows that cylinder to be a little smaller. So the whole gun itself is a lot thinner, allowing it to be more concealable. Now this gun has a 1.8 inch barrel. And this gun is really designed to be shot at defensive distances, meaning 10 yards or less. But it can still be very accurate even at longer distances with some practice. Now all in all, I think this is a really good gun. It's very high quality, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Smith & Wesson. Now, the question is, is this gun or other lightweight snub nose revolvers a good carry option for most women, or really for most people in general? 
I teach concealed carry classes and I see a lot of people come through with these guns and a lot of them really struggle with these guns. And here are my thoughts on that. The general consensus seems to be that because revolvers are simple to operate and because its design makes it less likely to malfunction, that that means it's the perfect gun for inexperienced people. And that's just not true. First of all, a 38 Special is a pretty good size round. I'd say it's more powerful than your average 9mm, especially if you're using plus P's, which this gun is rated for. Now when you pair that with this super light, short barreled gun, it's naturally going to kick harder and it's going to be harder to control. So that's number one. Number two, the low profile sights make it a lot more difficult to find and line up your sights, especially when you're firing multiple rounds or in a stressful situation. Now I know this is designed for short distance defensive shooting and maybe it's supposed to be more like a point and shoot gun. But to me, that's a big downside to this style of gun, especially if we're talking about less experienced shooters that may not have the fundamentals and the practice necessary to know how to line those sights up correctly or to do it quickly. Now, number three, my last and most important point is the trigger pull. Now, I don't want to offend anybody, but most women and older people don't have as much hand strength as others. And that long, heavy trigger pull is difficult for them. Now, I'll use my mother as an example. My dad picked her out this beautiful Smith & Wesson Model 60 Performance Center revolver. Just a fantastic gun. But she struggles with a little bit of arthritis in her fingers, and it was almost impossible for her to operate that double action trigger. And I see that in a lot of my classes. Some people have a hard time being consistent with that trigger. And at the very least, it tends to pull you off target. Now, I'm not putting down these guns by any means. Like I said, I really like this gun, but I just don't think it's the best option for most women and older people. And that doesn't mean that they can't shoot this gun well. There are plenty that can, but that comes with a lot of practice and solid fundamentals. Now, my recommendation for anybody buying a gun or buying one for other people, see how it feels in your hand, see how it shoots, and only get a gun that you're comfortable with. Then once you get it, practice with it regularly. Most of the time for those people, I'll recommend a nice compact striker fired semi-auto for a concealed carry for men and women. You usually have a lot more options with something like that. That's it for today, guys. This is the Smith & Wesson 642, a great quality little gun. Perfect for some, but maybe not for all. Now don't forget to leave questions in the comments below. You can follow me on Facebook at Pilot Patriot. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.